Uh, so first of all, let me express my congratulation. It's 15 years uh, on the market, on the very tough market, I think, when you know big players buy clever guys, rebrand their uh, inventions and sell um, at their names. So yeah, congratulations. And of course, thank you for, uh, for inviting me here. Okay, um, I really play with uh, organic uh, photovoltaics for quite a long time, but when Zbyszek asked me to, to propose any topic, uh, it was hard to find something new. So we decided that I will, I will give a talk, some introductionary talk about, about um, EMPS, EMVS. And uh, when I saw the, uh, the timetable, I realized that it will be quite tough to draft your attention after, first of all, a very good introduction uh, of the system we had uh, this morning, and of course, after lunch when everybody falls asleep. So um, I decided to, to organize my, my talk in a, a more philosophical, philosophical uh, way, okay? So, uh, for me, uh, the, uh, this technique has two, two faces, bright and dark side, okay? Uh, and probably uh, you know this picture, uh, this is a cover of, of an album of yeah, <laughs> Pink Floyd band, The Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, okay, why I hope uh, it will be quite clear at the end <clears throat> of my talk. So. Uh, about the, the bright side. The bright side is so that uh, if you want to make a demo for students, uh, you can simply go through a lab, you grab a few pieces, a few toys in every physical lab should be. It means uh, uh, a generator, oscilloscope, uh, LEDs as a light source, and uh, yeah, you need a solar cell to, to, to test it. And in case you want to make EMPS, it means intensity modulated photocurrent, you need extra preamplifier. If you want to do intensity modulated voltage spectroscopy, you just can connect the, the, the solar cell directly to, uh, to an oscilloscope. Uh, and uh, what you get if you set here a sinusoidal signal, so you shine a light that changes its intensity according to a sine wave, uh, you can see here on this picture. So we get uh, the answer in the form of a sinusoidal line, usually shifted uh, uh, one against each other. Okay, this is for demo. If you really want to, to make a good experiment, try to contact Photonov <laughs> and ask uh, to deliver such a system. Okay, if we start to analyze these two signals uh, in terms of their phase shift and the ratio of the amplitude of both signals, we'll see that they are uh, depending on the frequency of the light perturbation we apply uh, setting up the system. What you can see here is a, a response, e EMVS, photovoltaic response uh, of a simple, let's say now we can say model uh, organic solar cells. So we see that the uh, phase shift changes and also the um, uh, amplitude Okay, or, or this, uh, this ratio changes mm, with the mm, frequency. So this is the bright side, the dark side. Uh, maybe it's not so dark, but uh, when you start to analyze the data, I think uh, you should uh, take care about uh, the model you want to use to uh, to understand what you really um, what you really measure, and I would like to start with a very simple experiment. <clears throat> in experiment, we can in this experiment we can measure 
the mobility of church carriers uh, using a time of flight method. So we use a short pulse of light that generates in a semiconductor charge carriers and we apply electric field simply by uh, applying a voltage across this uh, semiconductor <coughs> and this electric field first of all will split uh, excitons which are generated uh, when the light is uh, absorbed the, in the material and also forces the charge carriers to move to the external electrodes. So uh, the circuit for this experiment is quite simple. So we have a battery, the source of the voltage. We have uh, two electrodes. One should be transparent so the uh, light can enter into the material. And the second one should be uh, connected to, to a system uh, that will uh, measure the current. It can be simply just resistor and uh, oscilloscope. Okay, <clears throat> and as you can see here, we can measure both the time uh, the holes and electrons need to come to the electrode. So we can measure both mobility of holes and electrode in such a simple experiment. And uh, why we observe this kind of, of results as here? It can be also simply explained. If we excite uh, uniformly our material, so we have uh, the uniform distribution of charge carriers, and we let them to move uh, to the electrode, and register the current. So what we are doing here, we are simply counting the number of, of charge carriers uh, coming to this electrode. And if they go uniformly, we observe just uniform current till all charge carriers uh, come to the electrode and there is no, no charge carriers in the system. And it works quite well, for instance, for silicon. If you play with organic semiconductor, you have a bad luck, <laughs> and uh, you may you may face what we call the dispersive transport. So now the mobility of all um, charge carriers differs in time and in space. And what we observe here, we observe that the current is not uniform till the end. It just fades uh, uh, with time. And. Uh, because in the modeling, the assumption of the model are quite important, in, 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 especially in this case. <clears throat> so please forget about this. And later on, we will just consider only this, um, this uh, case. Okay? So let's change a bit our system. Now we do not use the short pulse of light. We just use a continuous beam. And uh, sorry. And uh, we add a small perturbation to the, uh, uh, to, the, to the beam, okay? And this small perturbation, the best way is to use it as a sinusoidal, or at least a sum of uh, sinusoidal perturbations. So we can express uh, uh, the, the time dependence using this kind of um, formula. So the question is now, what is the uh, response of the sample in the sense, what is the current, this AC current, okay, in this system? And of course, this uh, value also matters because it sets up the working point of the, of the system. It's like in analysis of electrical circuit by changing this value, we also change the, uh, the working part of the system. So uh, we do not have to go into quantum mechanics. Uh, even in a simple classical model, uh, not simple, <coughs> in a classical approach, the model is quite complicated. So I will, I will skip quantum mechanics um, uh, completely. So what we use 
It's simple Drude model, and in the Drude model, <coughs> the current or current density is proportional uh, to the number of charge carriers, the immobility, and uh, electric field we have in our conductor. Okay, and this is true if the charge carrier density is uniform across the, the conductor. In our case, it is not, because we change uh, the number of charge carriers due to light excitation, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, it may change in space and in time, and actually, in our model, we assume that the number of uh, charge carriers uh, follows the intensity of this perturbation. We forget about the, the set point, let's say, of the system. And uh, just a, a small uh, calculation. If we uh, have this uh, value, uh, mobility um, multiplied by the, uh, the electric field, we know the average velocity of charge carriers, and we can define uh, T0 as a times that uh, one charge, has, uh, charge carrier has to spend to travel uh, through our, our sound. Okay, <clears throat> so if we want to calculate the, mm, the current, we have to just count all the charge carriers that are um, entering the, or appearing at the electrode. So we had to sum up uh, all of them, I mean all that were generated uh, at time t at the electrode, plus all of uh, that that were generated in the sample <laughs> at the depth x before, a bit before, so they had enough time to come exactly at the same moment to the electrode, okay? <clears throat> and so uh, the number of uh, of uh, the charge carriers uh, that appear at the certain depth is uniform, but it varies with time, as I, as I assumed here, okay? So <clears throat> if we put everything together, uh, we have a simple formula to calculate the, the, mm, the current. And nature is very kind for us because it gave us this function, and this function can be derived anytime we want, and we always get the same function, okay? So the calculus is simple to, uh, to calculate. <clears throat> so uh, we just uh, have to, to because uh, we have defined borders, okay? We have to just simply subtract uh, this value for D, and the same formula for zero, and what we get is written here, okay? <clears throat> and usually, if we use such methods that we use a small perturbation and we, and we read the response, uh, we define the transfer function as a ratio, respo uh, okay, response to the stimuli, okay? And this is written here. <clears throat> Okay, so now let's change a bit our model, okay? Is everything clear so now? Yeah. Okay, so let's remove the battery from here and put a source of electric field inside. It might be, for instance, a, a dipole moment in the PN junction, okay? So, uh, what changes to our model in the sense of formulas? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, so, the results should be the same. Okay, so all the calculation should be the same, <clears throat> except one thing. Uh, I assumed that the perturbation we have here due to the mm, uh, 
due to the non-uniform distribution of charge carriers does not affect the electric field. If we have a strong enough battery, it's OK. If you have a weak dipole inside, it may not be fulfilled. OK? <clears throat> so within uh, this model I showed you, we can, we can model the photocurrent response, but it's hard to, uh, to find the photovoltage response. And uh, uh, it was, of course, uh, solved uh, before. And uh, I found a paper uh, published in before, before 60s. <coughs> uh, when exactly the problem was solved. So uh, the, the, the approach is a bit different. So here we generate the charge carriers only on this electrode. And they have to pass the whole thickness of the sample to the, to the second electrode. OK? <clears throat> and uh, why I came across this, this paper? Because in Many publications uh, concerning EMPS, EMVS, you may uh, read according to Gartner's model. So I thought, okay, clever guy did a uh, good job uh, about this EMPS, EMVS response. But as you can see here, uh, the formula he derived, derived, it's just let's say byproduct, <laughs> I would say. So it's far in the appendix because the, uh, the main title of the paper, it's not about the response to, to the sinusoidal um, stimuli, but he was interested in the diffusion of minor carriers through the depletion layer. So carriers produced in the, in the bulk, and they had to travel, uh, to travel through the barrier, to the depletion layer, and uh, Actually, the, the formula uh, found in this paper uh, later appeared in, in the uh, in EMPS, EMVS uh, analysis that, uh, OK, maybe it's true, but not exactly from this model, OK? So, but anyway, we will use this approach to, to model both EMPS and EMV as response. So uh, I just rewritten uh, the model, Gartner's model, in terms of uh, symbols I used previously. And now <clears throat> from this equation, we can get the current response if we assume voltage to be zero, so zero here and nothing else to do. Or we can assume that the current is zero. So we have to move voltage here and divide everything. And what we get? Again, we get the response. This is exactly the same formula we got from the previous model. Here is the formula we could not, with, we could not get with, within that model. So uh, if we calculate the transfer, now, now we have two formulas. We can calculate both transfer function for EMPS and EMVS, <coughs> and uh, yeah, the definition is as here. And here you can see how this uh, uh, model solar cells behaves in, in such an experiment. And of course, uh, I will come back to the, to the shape uh, we have here. So I hope the bright side, uh, sorry, the dark side was not so, so dark, <laughs> was not so hard. But a few words about similarities and dissimilarities between different, um, different methods we use to characterize uh, solar cells. Uh, so another way what EMPS, EMVS is and what is not. So first of all, this is striking um, uh, that the result looks really almost the same in both EMPS and VOS as in impedance spectroscopy, okay? <clears throat> but it's a trap. 
It's a trap. Uh, they look the same. Why? Uh, give me a few seconds. But please uh, consider the, the, the two techniques as probing the three-dimensional space uh, where we have on one, uh, one axis, we have uh, intensity of light, it's here. We have the, the second axis, it's just the current, and the third axis is voltage, okay? So in uh, impedance spectroscopy, we just probe in this direction, okay? So the, the power of light, if, you, if we use it at all, is fixed. In case of EMVS, uh, we probe in this direction, okay? So the power of light changes, the voltage uh, changes, but the current is zero. And again, uh, e, uh, in uh, um, intensity modulated photovoltaic spectroscopy, we go along this line, okay? <clears throat> uh, so, yes, the results are similar, but are not the same, okay? It's not only the matter of the working point, but it's the matter of different mechanisms. And uh, yeah, to, let's say, uh, solve the problem of uh, correspondence between impedance uh, spectroscopy and EMPS, EMVS, uh, in this paper, the Barbeck group tried to introduce something like light intensity modulated impedance spectroscopy. <clears throat> I don't know if it uh, will uh, affect the society. Now I, I haven't seen too many papers going this, uh, going this direction. So the another, another technique that is used to, to, to test solar cells is the quantum efficiency measurement. Okay, <clears throat> maybe it's completely different technique, but in many uh, applications, many, in many uh, devices used to, to do it, we use a chopper because we use a locking amplifier uh, to detect small perturbation, uh, okay, to, 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 to detect the small changes in the signal. And in this case, <clears throat> uh, the value we measure here may depend on the frequency the chopper is working on. It, it, for, for instance, for organic or DSSC or perovskite, it's quite, quite often, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, value we get from EMPS and uh, this technique, the value of current, should be the same in the limit of zero frequency, okay? So I would say here we have more correspondence between the techniques and in the case of impedance spectroscopy. Okay, but is the comparison so bad if we take impedance and EMPS, EMVS? No, because <coughs> uh, we still can use the knowledge we acquire uh, doing uh, impedance spectroscopy to analyze our systems. So, in general, I guess that people who are familiar with the, uh, with the technique, just by, just by looking at the results, can guess, okay, here we have this type of um, uh, equivalent circuit. In this case, in case, we have this kind of equivalent circuit. And uh, these results can be sometimes even strange. They don't have to be a functions, like here, for instance. This is a, uh, I would say, quite often observed behavior of perovskite solar cells. And here you can see the respective equivalent circuit. They were not functions to begin with. Because yeah. of the negative frequencies, then. Yeah, they, they, okay. They are closed anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, to, to model what we observe in EMPS, EMVS, we usually 
use the same method as in impedance spectroscopy. It means we try to find out an equivalent circuit. And is it valid or not? Yes, it is. And uh, of course, it also it is also good to to have some uh, reasons for this. And if we take uh, one of the yeah, most advanced model uh, you can find uh, on the market, I would say, uh, taking into account uh, all all um, uh, all processes that can appear in, in such a system. So I mean diffusion, uh, I mean fading of the recombination of the charge carriers, the fact that the Mm, uh, charge carriers are not uniformly generated, but you know it is usually uh, uh, like this, so exponentially <coughs> with depth into the sample. So what we uh, what we get we get such an equation. And if you are a trained physicist, what kind to your mind if you see such a, such equation? For me, it's just simply an oscillator dumped and forced, okay? The second thing that comes to my mind is an RC circuit. And uh, again, as I said before, if you have the same formulas, the same uh, equations, we get the same results, okay? So we can manipulate with this. And also, another thing, if we add here, let's say, here we have just <coughs> the diffusion of the mm, uh, negative charge carriers. If you add another kind of diffusion, like for instance, ions in perovskite, we get here another uh, yeah, uh, piece of equations that, that are just summed up, okay? So we can combine and we can build uh, this type this type of equivalent circuits. Uh -huh. So may I ask you, back to this equation, mm -hmm. uh, do we consider an external fields here that would be uh, changing it? I mean, the, the drift current, is it input somehow? No, here. So we need to have this uh, really zero voltage mm -hmm. between the sides, yes. right? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, so, uh, for, uh, for solving this uh, equation, uh, the authors here proposed uh, uh, several regimes. Because it's not so easy to, to get the, uh, the exact solution for such a complicated equation for all, type, uh, all, all ranges of, of parameters, okay? So we can define, and you can find this, this definitions in, in many papers about uh, EMPS, EMVS, <coughs> several time and uh, landscapes uh, connected with processes like diffusion uh, of, uh, of uh, charge carriers, uh, like uh, the time they need to, uh, to travel through this, uh, area, for instance, or the distance uh, they have here to, to travel, etc. And <clears throat> uh, depending on the relation between these time constants, we can observe uh, different uh, type of results, let's say. So all these uh, curves can be built as a, uh, or almost all of them, can be built as um, some of some circuits with certain uh, with certain uh, frequencies, and that was said this morning. This frequency uh, correspond to time scale of some uh, respective processes. So here is one example, and here is another. Very nice, depending again on on the relations and uh, just the last one. So, uh, to conclude, now in many publications we need to prepare graphical abstracts, so I have a graphical conclusions. Uh, 
So on one side, if we test our cell, uh, we get the total information about the process of uh, conversion of the light energy to the uh, to the uh, to the power electric power, but if we use the EMPS EMVS, we may get some insight into the wide spectrum of different processes that happen in the in the cell: diffusion, recombination, generation of carriers, etc. Et so to be more serious, yeah, we get with EMPS EMVS we get the insight into the uh, series of processes that uh, happens in, in our sample. Uh, the experiment is quite simple, okay, in, in the sense that there is no mechanical elements, there is no vacuum necessary, etc., etc. And uh, what we what we have to keep in mind is that to uh, understand, we, we need an advanced modeling, and we always have to. Uh, to check if all the assumptions of the models are uh, really fulfilled in case of, of our sample. Okay? Finally, I would like to thank my uh, colleagues who helped uh, with this uh, work and thank you for your attention. Because uh, you have uh, uh, the same, I mean, you have presented the same uh, convention that you divide your inputs by the intensity of, uh, of, of the stimuli of, 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 of light. Clearly, it is you assume that the samples are linear, linear. that, that yep. the response would be linear. Mm -hmm. But uh, would it be? Uh, I mean, do you have? Uh, an idea how those equations will be uh, uh, more involved if we remove that uh, assumption. Okay, so uh, first of all, the the uh, the here, okay, or maybe on the model I have here, I assume that the number of uh, here. This is the first one. Okay, so. If it's uh, not fulfilled, you have to propose another uh, formula, and we can try to, to put it into the, num uh, into the um, equation. Okay? So if you think about this kind of uh, nonlinearity, okay, it can be, let's say, easily acquired if you have an idea what is the real response. Okay? And, uh, yeah, in all this, uh, on this uh, model, and usually people assume that uh, the response is linear. If not, it's better to uh, to reduce, for instance, the amplitude of the oscillations. Okay, if there are some non-linear process or there is some, let's say, coupling between uh, uh, between processes that are in. So uh, the, the, this uh, pendulum-like formula uh, will not be just a sum of different, but there will be some coupling between modes. And this also can be, I, I guess, because I haven't got deeply into this, uh, could be accounted in, in, this model, in such models. Okay, then, uh can you move just back to this equation, to the main equation for the oscillator, dubbed oscillator? Mm -hmm. Because I might be in error uh, okay. with my own adult life, but uh, yeah, yeah th this part. This okay. Part. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you are not in an error. This is uh, something that is, uh, okay, the mm, dumped and uh, forced um, pendulum is here. This is something extra. Yeah, yeah. this extra I have. Mm -hmm. If I might add, uh, mm -hmm. well, I would say that uh, if anybody asked me that uh, those uh, carriers are generated in the space charge region alone, doesn't matter how 
what is the absorption depth for the for the photons to, to enter the, the solid? Uh, oh, I, I, I think it's dying on me. Uh, this this mic. Uh, why is that? Uh, because it is the place where there is this mechanism preventing uh, the recombination and uh, all this red uh, tail that extends beyond space charge region, if it does, uh, would not really contribute to the uh, to the photocurrent of photo photo voltage. I don't know, but to photocurrent here to photocurrent. Uh, yes, in the sense that uh, you mean that okay this. This simply means that we generate uh, excitons and they are splitting. And indeed, we do generate excitons, but uh, they, they don't have to split in this region. But okay, in case of, uh, I would say, uh, organic uh, materials, yes, it's true, but for, for the um, uh, silicon solar cells, for instance, it's not only the place uh, at the PN junction where you can generate uh, charge carriers. They are also generated inside. Okay, the, the mm, rate of the carriers that can come to, to the mm, electrodes as compared to uh, the, the, the number of absorbed photons is lower, but it's not zero okay. still. Any questions? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. For Thank you.